we are not closing the Ignalina nuclear power station because we wanted that. Is it the case? We, it's a burden which was imposed. kindly imposed by the European Union and uh, there are some voices saying that wait a minute, let us have it because, uh, because uh, it was kind of well functioning, it was one billion uh, dollars or euros uh, were invested into the safety of the plant mm -hmm. and we're saying that we don't want to close it but okay they put the condition condition either you in without Ignalina or either you out with Ignalina so it was the European Union who actually asked us to do it and, uh, it's, and we're doing it not because we want it so they have to also perhaps think about it on those lines. And Lithuania suffered uh, the deepest crisis uh, out of all of them. Yes, but when they when they see how uh, I mean when they when they, when they com we compare all countries, all EU member states, in this situation, in the in the context uh, of crisis of the Baltic states, they look uh, they look uh, just you know uh, the front runners. Uh, Latvia, which uh, had very serious problems, they are out of this. And Lithuania, we didn't. Lithuania even didn't ask for any uh, financial assistance. We managed without this, without asking for money from the European Commission or from the EU budget. And Estonia is also doing uh, comparatively very well. And that is why they think that we could manage on our own or uh, ourselves. But at the same time, I have to say that you know. Uh, I could agree with you that uh, it was a, um, a requirement imposed on us uh, during the accession negotiations, the closure of Ignalina. But at the same time, remember, I, I cannot recall now when Ignalina was built. But that is not the nuclear facility forever. So one day we would have uh, we be we it's uh, we have to close Ignalina not not maybe not necessarily when we did this the first uh, block which was closed and then the second block in 2009 so but it's it's uh, <laughs> we cannot live with Ignalina for 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 years. Uh, I doubt if this would help us to uh, to prove that uh, uh, you, we have to get more money from the EU budget. Because I participated in the past, I participated in a number of meetings with the EU commissioners when, you know, ambassadors from Lithuania were coming and uh, trying to, to explain that it's a, it's a consequence of the Soviet occupation and that uh, we can, it's a, to have a burden for uh, our own budget and we need money and, and so on. But you know, the answer is very clear. There is no money. There is no money. And uh, mm. each and every EU member state, be, uh, be, uh, the, 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 the input is uh, uh, a bit less or around 1% of the GNP every year. So it's not much. And it is, you know, to my mind, it, uh, it wouldn't be a disaster if they would, you know, pay a bit more. And that's what this European Parliament is asking every year, each and every year. But when, you know, leaders or the Prime Ministers of the EU Member States come, they have very clearly expressed national interests. And those national interests is to pay less. Because what they do then, then they understand that they can, you know, do something, but how they, how they understand they can do with those money something useful for the country, more useful than those people in Brussels and the European Commission who will who are responsible for the distribution uh, of uh, EU money. And uh, I do not like very much this, you know, those celebrations in the member states when the leaders come back and they say, I, I say, uh, I want something for, for, Lithu for, for one or another country. If we will continue like this, if you will continue like this, then uh, it's very difficult to uh, push European Union as such forward.